Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming and welcome to our latest 8th edition 40k battle report. Uh, another occasion for us to test another couple of armies. Um, so Jonathan is taking his Tau. Dirty Tau, or dirty. maybe not so Dirty Tau now. Dirty Tau, probably we'll still Dirty Tau. And I'm taking my Ultramarines. So if you normally watch the 30k battle reports that we do, you'll know my Ultramarines are geared up for Horus Heresy. Um, I have a, a couple of options for 40k, and that's what I'm taking today. And they're going to be accompanied by a small little um, attachment of Space Wolves. Which is kind of cool, because it kind of fits the fluff. They're in the Horus Heresy, mm. Space Wolves are sent out to watch Rebute Gulliman for signs of heresy. So small little group of Space Wolves are out to watch the Ultramarines. It's kind of what they're doing now. Rebute Gulliman is back. Maybe, possibly, you know, being dead and all, and then coming back. Heretic? Don't know. So the Space Wolves are out to watch him again, and they're out to watch his sons. So, Ultramarines, with a little bit of Space Wolves versus Tau. The mission that we are doing is secure and control. Uh, one objective marker in our half. And, uh, yeah, let's go kill some Tau. Okay, guys, here's my 1850 points worth of Tau. Uh, my commander is my HQ choice, and he's got two Mark Light drones with him. He's equipped with a Cyclic Iron Raker and a Fusion Blaster. And my other HQ choice is Long Strike. Uh, I'm intrigued by Long Strike in this edition, so I'm going to give that a whirl and see how he gets on. Um, he looks pretty tasty. So he's got his. Um, Hammerhead and he's got smart missile system as his secondary weapon choice. Of course, you can use that now Which is a lot more effective than maybe it was in the past For elite quite an elite heavy army. I've got uh, one squad of um, Crisis suits bit of a mixed bag here. They've all got missile pods and we've got one burst cannon one fusion blaster and one plasma rifle I'm gonna put those with my commander and I'm going to deploy those via uh, the Manta deployment, which is kind of like a deep strike option, looks pretty interesting. And I'm going to do the same thing as well with both squads of stealth suits. In fact, no, I think I might infiltrate those guys instead, actually, because the infiltration is, again, slightly different. So those two stealth suit squads, they're four-man squads and have a mark -like drone embedded in each. Quite interested in the way that the drones are going to be working in this release because they are separate units once they're deployed and the safety protocol means that drones can leap in front of other units and save shots. So that looks quite interesting. Anyways, I'm moving on to other elites. I've got another crisis suit squad, um, very much orientated towards killing uh, tougher units. So plasma rifles throughout and one fusion blaster. I've got the mandatory suicide piranha with a fusion blaster and I've got my ghost keel uh, with the fusion blasters again and the cyclic ion raker and that's going to be coming in via manta deployment as well. I really like the idea of stealth suits coming in. Of course there is no optimized stealth cadre anymore but I just like the way that that sort of plans out in the fluff so we're going to go down that route. Um, in terms of troops I've got three squads of um, strike teams. I've got two six and a five man and one of the six man squads has a um, devil fish for a transport with a burst cannon. Uh, and uh, that should be quite interesting. Again, vehicles looking pretty tough, even though that is traditionally quite a flimsy tank. Might actually work well in this release, we'll see. And then, of course, we've also got the Riptide. Now, the Riptide, along with the Ghost Kill, I've given them Stim Injectors, uh, just to hopefully make them a little bit more survivable. And I've also given him the Early Warning Override. I've got a feeling that if Rich is bringing Terminators, then it's going to be some deep striking going on. So I've given him the Early Warning Override so that he can react very quickly. Now, unless I've misread it, then it looks like with Early Warning Override, you can fire at the unit when it appears as if it was your shooting phase but then still shoot normally so it seems like that restriction that was interceptor might have been lifted so i'm hoping i'm interpreting that right anyway uh, i've also given him the target lock option as well so when he's moving around he's not going to be subject to any penalties for his heavy weapons um, just to make him a little bit more effective hopefully uh, so there you go there's my 1850 points worth of tau so all of this comes together to form a battalion detachment. Um, so I've got three troop choices. That was the struggle. So I've really watered down the size of the squads to get three troops in there to make it a battalion. So that's going to give me plus three command points. Uh, so hopefully they will do us some good as the game progresses. 
HQ and Warlord for the Ultramarine today. I am running a Captain in Calafracti Terminator armor. This guy has a uh, Bolter and a Chain Fist, second HQ. I am taking my Chaplain. This guy has a Plasma Pistol um, and basically comes as stock. Apart from that, I am running a Battalion Detachment, so I get an extra three command points for this. So, first of my troops... I'm taking a 10-man tactical squad, all equipped with bolters and in a rhino. I am also taking a 5-man tactical squad. Again, all equipped with bolters and they will be in a razorback. Looking forward to how razorbacks perform now in 8th edition. Be good to find out. Uh, third troop choice, I'm taking another 10-man tactical squad, all equipped with bolters again. Sergeant has got a power sword in here. Into elites, I'm taking a 5-man Terminator squad, all equipped with chain fists. Second elite choice, I am taking my Contempt of Dreadnought, one Keras Assault Cannon and one Power Fist. Heavy support, I am taking a three-man Grav Centurion squad. Um, so yeah, interesting to see what's happened with Grav, how that's changed in 8th edition. So let's see what damage they can do. I'm also running a patrol detachment. So this will give me no extra command points but i am taking a small little squad of space wolves so i'm taking a rune priest as a hq this guy has smite and jaws of the world wolf i'm taking two five man gray hunter squads all equipped with bolters chainsaws bolt pistols and finally i'm taking a heavy support slot of a vindicator so that is my 1850 points of glorious Adeptus Astartes. The might of the Imperium is now set up across the battlefield. The might of the Ultramarines facing off against the evil Tau. So into deployment. My objective marker is here in the ruined building on the left hand flank of the battlefield being held on to by the first of the Grey Hunters squad. We are leaving it to our Space Wolf brethren to hold on to hit this objective with all their fury and might that the Space Wolves can muster. Um, the main advance of the army, Razorback, Rhino, boys inside, heading down that nice open pathway. Admittedly, there is a Riptide standing in the background, but yeah, you know, we'll cross that bridge and we come to it. Uh, next to them, Grav Centurions and the Contemptor Dreadnought, one Carious Assault Cannon and a Power Fist, hopefully laying down lots and lots of firepower and thumping whatever gets close to them. Into the right-hand flank now we have the Space Wolf Vindicator, hopefully laying down lots and lots of fire on to the town. I've not used a Vindicator in 8th edition yet, so it's going to be interesting to see how these have changed. Now there's no template, what damage they can do. 10-man uh, Ultramarine squad ready to run forward we have a bit of open ground here so we're going to have to cover that and hidden away on the right hand flank is the second five man grey hunter squad and the rune priest looking at sneaking their way up the battlefield now they do have some stealth suits next to the imperial fuel bunker that are going to come across quite quickly these guys have infiltrated the piranha for the Tau is up on top of the disused landing platform with the hammerhead right behind it laying down lots and lots of fire. Behind the buildings hunkered all down are the first of the crisis suits looking and making their way across the battlefield quickly uh, to get into action. Fire warrior squads in both buildings, one at the back, one at the front. The evil, nasty, vile thing that is the Riptide, which I'm still sure is still vile and nasty, is on the right-hand flank, staring down at the Razorback and the Rhino for the Ultramarines. And finally, the Devilfish is hunkered down right at the back of the battlefield, looking at making its way up sneakily and quickly to the Ultramarines' objective. So it is the Ultramarines to go first in the deployment. I finished first, so hey... Me to go first, unless John rolls a six, which he does. He rolls the Geeks logo. So having seized the initiative, the Tau are looking to get the Alpha Strike in and the stealth suits have made their way around the Imperial Refinery and are looking to attack the Ultramarine squad just down here. 
Operation Suicide Piranha is go. And I'm looking to ram a fusion blaster straight into that Vindicator. And I've got Long Strike for backup as well. So Long Strike is on top of that building, clear line of sight straight down into that Vindicator. Looking to eradicate that turn one or being well. I know vehicles are tough in the new release, but uh, that's scary. It needs to go. And then in the center of the battlefield, I've got my crisis squad has gone up to the top of the building, looking to bring those plasma rifles to bear on the centurions down here. I've got my riptide looking at the rhino, looking at the uh, razorback down here. Not quite sure which way it's going to go yet. Got to try and figure out what's actually inside those vehicles and deal with it accordingly. And I've got my devil fish that's just making a little sneak around the back of the battlefield down there. Um, hoping Rich forgets about that to be honest with you for the time being the main strike on this is coming later um, I've got a ghost keel and I've got another squad of cr uh, crisis suits that are coming in via Manta deployment so uh, I'm going to try and disrupt that little party a little later on uh, during the course of the battle Okay, so the stealth suit squad has opened up on those ultramarines and have very effectively removed those guys from play, uh, which is a pretty awesome start. And then the piranha is about to open up at the Vindicator and it needs a four to hit, which it does. And the weapon is strength eight, so it's gonna need a three to wound, which it does. What you might have just noticed is that's a three, which is not a wound because it's equal. So it actually needs a four. So the stealth suits have opened up at the ultramarine squad as you can see and have took those out of play pretty effectively which is which is awesome. So now the piranha is going to open up at the vindicator and it needs a four to hit which it does and then it's a strength eight weapon and the toughness of the vindicator is also eight so it's going to need a four. Oh no that's a fail which is a bit annoying. Uh, I'm also going to fire the uh, the pulse carbines at it as well and um, just through some sheer look of dice roll I actually managed to take a, a wound off there which is uh, which is pretty nice. So that's quite handy. Now next up is Long Strike. Uh, Long Strike has a pretty awesome ballistic skill. He's got to be hitting on twos and obviously I'm going to fire the railgun at him with a solid shot. Uh, so he's just going against the Vindicator. Yes. Oh awesome. Uh, okay, so it needs a two to hit, which it does. It's got a strength of 10, so it needs threes to wound. And I can add one to that because he's a tank case. So that two becomes a three, which is enough to cause a wound. And that's an AP minus four. So it is uh, D6 wounds off that weapon, which is pretty harsh. Uh, if I'd got a six to wound, and that would actually have caused D3 mortal wounds as well. So it's a pretty awesome weapon. But anyway, let's have a look. So that's three wounds off of that. And then he's also got a smart missile system on there as well. And we may as well just go wild and chuck the whole job lot down. So that's two weapons that are both heavy four. Again, hitting on twos. So one miss out of all that lot, which is re-rollable. And is also a hit. And that weapon is at strength five. So that's way below the toughness of the indicator. So it's going to need fives in order to cause a wound. And we get one. We two. get two wounds out of that. And the AP modifier on that is zero. So you're going to get a three up save on that, Rich. Oh, so failed one. So there's another wound taken off from the smart missile system. For the rest of the Tau shooting, well, the crisis suits at the top there opened up at the Centurions have killed two guys off. And that was with the help of the uh, strike squad just in front. They were just in range with their pulse rifles. Then the Riptide opened up. I've uh, overcharged him and um, opened up um, full bore at the Razorback. And that has been destroyed. And... Uh, yeah, the guys are out. It didn't explode. It just got to blown up. So the guys are out and uh, fighting fit. And that's uh, that's the rest of the shooting. But that's not a bad round of shooting, really. Taking off that tactical squad down there. Two Centurions and a Razorback. Um, yeah, I'll take that. Not a bad round of shooting. What a devastating round of shooting that was from the Tau. Two Centurions gone. Sergeant managed to pass his morale check. So he's all good. Razorback gone, squad have moved up. Man, that was tough. Losing another tactical squad as well. The whole 10-man squad just wiped out by stealth suits. Ouch. Contest Dreadnought has gone up. He's looking at shooting at the Riptide, killing him off. These guys have moved up six. 
Mm. Probably going to die. Uh, Rhino's just seen what happened to the race mat and decided to get the hell out of Dodge and don't really blame him. Vindicator stayed still. Um, template is going to shoot the template. Wow, there's a 7th edition thing. The gun is going to shoot at this two squads up here. Probably more likely going to be the crisis suits I'm going to target. Um, let's see what damage a Vindicator shell does nowadays. Now there are no templates. And then finally... The Grey Hunter Squad and the Rune Priest are come around the building slightly. It's about an 8 inch charge into the back. Stealth Squad's there, so I think I might shoot first and then charge. So I have to keep my Terminators in reserve at the moment. So let's go shoot some Tau. If I don't do anywhere near the damage that Jonathan has just done to me, I'm going to claim that Tau is still OP and, uh, and have a mini hissy fit. In the psychic phase, the Rune Priest, who's hiding all the way back here, right at the back, is going to open up with Jaws of the World Wolf, I think it's called. Um, and basically, this can cause mortal wounds, but it's a seven. It's a warp charge seven. So I've got my two dice. It's a seven. It goes off. So now that the Jaws of the World Wolf has gone off successfully, um, I need to roll 2d6. I need to subtract... The target's move characteristics, which is 8 for the stealth squad. Anything over, the target suffers that many mortal wounds. And I roll the snake eyes. Yay! This riptide is quite scary, so the bolters from the tactical squad that came out of the Razorback shot into him. No damage. Keras Assault Cannon shot into him as well. Nice to do one wound. Good shoot in there, Tex. Next is my one remaining Grav Centurion. He is going to shoot at the same target. Now, I'm using the Grav um, Grav Cannon. So this is heavy four. Now I've moved. So I normally need three. So I now need fours. All but one have hit. Only strength five. Toughness of this sod is seven. So I'm going to have to wound on fives as well. I get two wounds. This is minus three to the ap riptide normally has a two up save but with the minus three it's now a five so you need to make the five ups he does not because the riptide has a two up save the grav am does d3 damage instead of just one so i've got two d3 dice let's roll them up oh it's just two wounds but john has stim injectors so on a six he ignores these wounds he ignores one of them one of them has gone through only 12 more wounds left on the uh, on the riptide wow things tough anyway let's go fire a vindicator the vindicator is going to shoot at the crisis squad all the way on top of that building there now i am just about in range but there's only three guys in the squad so it's only a heavy d3 shot so have a roll of that it's a five i get three shots it's still strength 10 for this vindicator shell or the demolisher shell so we're only gone twos all have wounded. So John now has three six up saves to make. Roll them up, John. He makes one of them. So two guys are going to take quite a lot of pain because these are D6 damage. There's one with six wounds and one with four wounds. So two of them die horribly, I'm guessing, John. Or have Tau got some utter rubbish rule that means they ignore them? No. Nope. No, good. So with no damage done, the Grey Hunters have pulled their triggers on their bolt pistols. Shooting into the stealth squad. I um, managed to do two wounds. John has fouled one, but with some, what's it called? Sa Saviour protocols. Saviour protocols. The droid went, I've got this, and took it. So, yay. <sighs> so we've only managed to do one drone and a couple of wounds to a riptide this turn. Oh no, and two crisis suits. I'll take the two crisis suits. Uh, so, now I'm going to measure up and see how far that charges. Grey Hunters made it into combat with the stealth suits down here. Now I did try and take in my Rune Priest as well, but he was a, he was shot at with um, supporting fire or whatever the hell the Tau do. Um, no damage done from any Overwatch, not on my Rune Priest, not on my Grey Hunters, so we're gonna be going into combat. Now, my Grey Hunters are gonna be hitting on threes, but wounding on fours, so I'm hitting with chain swords only. So here we go with the hit roll, hitting on threes, four misses. Now I need fours to wound, 
that's not bad. So John's got one, two, three, four, five, five armor saves to make. This only does one damage and there is zero AP. So John's save is three up. Three ups, here we go then. Five three ups. All but one. So one stealth suit guy has taken a wound because apparently they have two wounds. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's time for those dirty towers to hit me back. These guys will be hitting me on fives. Got two attacks each. Two attacks each, hitting me on fives. Only three hits. Now they're gonna be wounding me on fours because they're only strength four. No wounds done. So fortunately, uh, the last sole remaining crisis suit guy managed to pass his morale. He's climbed himself down from the building or used his jetpack to get down from the building. Um, looking to avoid fire from the Contemptor, but still have eyes on to uh, the Grav Centurion down here, hoping to finish him off this turn. So one of the cool things about being a jetpack unit with the fly keyword is that we can leave combat and shoot normally. So these guys have moved their max eight inches out of that combat scenario and are going to shoot back at the wolves. This squad down here, I've moved them closer to the Vindicator and uh, I'm going to hold their fire off until right at the end and decide whether they're going to help out their stealth suit brothers over there with the wolves or if they need to put some shots into this Vindicator to terminate it. We'll, we'll see which, uh, which way the rest of the battle goes and, and make a choice at that point. But that's quite a nice little tactical edge to have that. So next up, the Piranha is going to open up at the Vindicator. Now that's going to need a four to hit, first of all. Uh, which it fails miserably. That's quite annoying. I am going to use the Pulse Carbines as well, just to see if they cause any damage. So they are to two sets of Assault 2. So fours for those. Oh, nothing at all on that either. So that basically Piranha is useless. So what we're going to do now is go straight on to Long Strike. He's going to fire down from the top of the building at the Vindicator as well. Now he's got his legendary ballistic skill of uh, hitting on twos. And obviously again, I'm going to fire a solid shot into that. So he needs a two to hit, which he does. Now that is strength 10. The toughness of that Vindicator is eight. So he's going to need threes to wound. Which he does. Now I can add one to that if I needed to, thanks to him being a tank ace, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's gone through. That's AP minus four. So there'll be no saving throw on that at all. Uh, and he'll get a d6 damage result. Okay, three so three more. Okay, so I'm massively not keen on the Vindicator, as you've probably figured out by now. So given that uh, the Wolves got pretty mullered in that uh, round of shooting from the other uh, Stealth Suit Squad, I'm going to fire into that Vindicator. What I'm going to do first is fire the drone and see if I can get a marker light on it. So we're going to give that a little whirl first of all. Probably should have done that earlier, actually, and that's a miss, so not to worry. Now, each of these guys has got four shots each. So these guys require a four to hit. Nope. So that's quite a lot of misses in there, John. It's not the best, is it? No, you've, you've, you've missed a fair few times there. There's still quite a lot of hits. I mean, that's about 50-50. Yeah, that's not so bad. Okay, so we've got two, four, six, seven hits. Now their strength is five, so they're going to need fives. Hope for the best. And we've got two wounds on there. There's no AP modifier, so you need to make two three ups on that, Rich. Yeah, I'm not using those dice. Two three ups. Boom. Yeah, what you got? Okay, and to summarise the rest of the shooting, so the last remaining uh, crisis suit uh, opened up at the Grav Centurion. He's dead, thanks to a lot of plasma in the face um the um strike squad at the top there they opened up the contemptor but their weapons were pretty useless as you may well expect uh, so no damage was done there contemptor shrugged it off the riptide opened up at the ultramarines that have just been blown out of the razorback uh they're dead uh, so they got completely wiped out and then i had a bit of a punt to find my devil fish down here at the wolves and managed to get one wound uh so one guy killed out of that little unit there so that's that's quite nice soften that up ready for next turn pretty good in the morale phase, these two guys that were left behind have passed their morale. So they're going to be back in the game next turn and probably no doubt shooting and charging into that squad. Uh, that's certainly what I would be doing anyway. 
Time to get aggressive. These Tau are uh, cheering me up a little bit here, so it's time to uh, destroy some more. My two remaining Grey Hunters are going to go into the stealth suits down there. Try and do a little bit better in combat this turn. Open and shoot with bolt pistols first. Uh, Rune Priest, Smite, possibly down onto the other stealth suit squad. Vindicator, probably going to open up with his shell at that squad, hopefully killing them all off. Rhino, Rhino's gone up and it is ready for the next turn, moving up and up and up and up. No wounds done to this yet, so uh, it's, it's still going. It's still in the game, which is nice to know. My Terminators have deep strikes in. I have lost one, two, to um, stupid not intercept. What's it called now? Early warning override. Early warning override. So I've lost two, but now Terminators have got two wounds. Tough, tough, tough not to crack. Nine inch charge. Contenter Dreadnought's going to go in first though. He's going to go shoot with his assault cannon and then go punch this stupid ass Riptide in the face with a power fist. Uh, Grey Hunters have stayed still. Four shots, all hitting on twos. Ha! <laughs> I'm going to use a command point. I'm going to use a command point and re-roll that one. So I've got two hits now. So we're down to five command points now. Uh, now I'm wounding on fours. <sighs> I'm going to have to go do it in assault. Grey Hunters have made it into combat. The Contempt of Dreadnought has made it into combat. And so have the Terminators and my um, Captain in Cataphracty Armour as well. They're all in. I'm hoping we can say bye-bye Riptide. My Chaplain, however, didn't. But I get to re-roll... Uh, fail hits of one because of rights of war when within six inches of him. So that should hopefully make the combat a little bit better. Hopefully the Riptide will now go bye-byes. Attempt to Dreadnought is going to hit first. Four attacks. Twos to hit. He does not get a minus one to his hits because of his Dreadnought power fist. So hitting on twos. They have all hit apart from that one. And now I am wounding on twos. I am strength 14. The toughness of the Riptide is seven. So I'm double hitting on twos. They are wounded on twos. So they have all wound. It is a minus three AP. John now needs fives to save. Otherwise it's three damage. Oh, two have gone through. So John has just saved one of the wounds with his stim injectors. Now if anybody noticed, I rolled a one. When hitting now john being such a nice guy he's letting me use my rights of battle to hit him with that one so there's one hey and then it doesn't wound so there you go john that's all fair that's justice for you it's time for the califracti terminators now to hit so these guys normally hit on threes power fist minus one so hitting on fours oh that's quite a lot of hits there i'll take that definitely some strength eight toughness seven i'm wounding on threes they have all wounded so again, John needs to make four five-ups. He makes one of them. So three have gone through. Now, because he's a Terminator Power Fist, he's a D3 damage. Let's roll on these. So there's three, five, six more wounds. John has got Stim Injectors now. So on a roll of a six, he saves these. He doesn't save any of them. So... The Riptide is down to one wound remaining. My Terminators are equipped with Chain Fists, not Power Fists. So it's actually minus four to John's AP. Um, and then it's two damage, but I had six wounds done, which is exactly the same as two damage each. So it kind of worked out. Whew. There's a lot to learn. So anyway, so on to my captain in his Cataphracty armor. Normally hitting on twos, but he's got a Chain Fist, so he's hitting on threes. Rerolling any ones, two misses. Where's that chaplain when you need him? Oh, that's right. He's here, silly sod. Wounding on threes because it's times two to my strength. Only one wound. Now, this is AP minus four. So then, John, what's your normal save? You need a six up now. Uh, well, I'm going to use the Riptide's invulnerable save then, which is a five up. Oh, five up in one save from the Riptide. He makes it with the Geek's Dice. He's down to one wound, but he is still alive so the riptide is now going to hit me back he's got one he's got one wound left so he's only got two attacks and he's hitting me on fives nothing 
and a pointless combat down here with the Grey Hunters. Uh, stalemate, no wounds are done either side. So, yeah, that's going to continue on for a little while. They're going to back out. I'm going to charge back in. They're going to back out. I'm going to charge back in. They're going to back out. I'm going to charge back in until one of us is dead. Riptide can only move four inches now. It's going to be a tough one for that little bugger to uh, get away from me. But we're going to have to weather more and more and more shots. Whew, it's tough. But that Riptide needs to go die. That Riptide does need to die. I'm fully aware that John has stuff in reserve. So the ailing Riptide has used all four inches of its movement to briefly back away from uh, the Ultras here that are massed up to kill it. I'm under no illusion that this is the final turn for this Riptide. But um, at least we're going to go out in a blaze of glory and uh, do some shooting first and hopefully soften up a little bit more. The devil fish that was parked behind the Riptide has moved up onto the top of the building. It'd be so great to let the troops out now. But of course that's not uh, how disembarking troops works anymore. But they are nicely above the Space Wolves down there. We can at least shoot at them and uh, worry about getting the troops out next turn. And it will be supported by the Ghost Keel and the commander that have both arrived fire manta deep strike um so yeah it's noose is tightening a little bit on these guys down here but of course when those guys are finished with the riptide then who knows what will happen next uh, everything else has stayed put quite happy with the position of the strike squads up there and the crisis suit and long strike and the fusion blaster on the piranha hopefully going to finally finish off that vindicator just the last point that the um, stealth suit squad over the back there have backed away from the wolves and again we'll continue the dance of backing away shooting and getting assaulted and so on and so forth until eventually one of us gives up devilfish has shot at the space wolves underneath it and has picked up a little buff there from the two markalite well one of the markalite drones hit got a markalite on so nice little buff there means that uh, three wolves have been killed from uh, shooting from the devil fish and then next up we've got the ghost keel that's going to be firing into that squad as well so i'm going to start with the big guns and start with the fusion blaster so next up to fire down in that direction is going to be the ghost keel he's got two fusion blasters i'm going to start out with and he needs a four to hit uh, those guys uh, so we've got one hit and one miss now the fusion blaster is a so the fusion blaster is a strength eight weapon so he's going to need twos in order to cause a wound which indeed he does and that is a modifier of minus four so he's not going to get a save on that unfortunately so the space wolves have a three up save as standard now any minus four from that is looking at seven on a d6 but because they're in cover they get plus one back again so rich needs to uh, roll a six in order to keep the space wolf in the game no which he doesn't, that's a four, so another casualty there. And then we've also got the Ghost Keel's Cyclic Ion Raker. That's a heavy six weapon, and he needs fours to hit. Oh, oh dear, that's pretty one bad, hit. so one hit. Strength seven, so he's going to need a three to wound. No. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to spend a command point because that sucks. Hey, so that's a wound and that's at a minus one modifier so you need a four up save there please rich denied oh, no. so that guy Left. he's dead no. so next up to shoot we've got the stealth battle suit and they are going to open up at the vindicator it's not the best weapon obviously but if i can destroy it with that then it saves the piranha uh, a shot and saves long strike a shot too so we're going to start out with that now these guys have got the burst cannons they've got um an assault four weapon and they need fours in order to hit so let's see how they do so we've got seven hits there and that's a strength five weapon so they're going to need fives in order to win the vindicator because it's toughness eight and they don't cause any wounds at all Woohoo! that sucks never mind okay so next down in priority order we've got the piranha that one is equipped with a fusion blaster and it's going to need a four to hit as well so let's see how that goes oh that's good so we've got ourselves a hit. Okay, so it's a strength eight weapon. The Vindicator is toughness eight as well. So it needs a four in order to wound. I rolled a three. 
and uh, while I'm happy spending command points, then that's one that I'd like to try again. So let's hope for a four this time. Ugh, not even any better. So it's out of desperation, really, that we then look to the pulse carbines. There's um, two of those on board, and they are at assault two. Uh, so again, we need fours to hit. And we've got two hits. And those are strength five, so they're going to need fives in order to wound. And we've got one wound there. So there's no AP modifier. So, Rich, you need to make a three-up save on your Vindicator. Yeah, Which you so do. So I guess I'm going to have to resort to using Long Strike. I was kind of hoping to be able to save his shot for something else, but that's not going to happen. So let's hope that his famous ballistic skill doesn't let us down. So he needs a two to hit with his heavy rail gun. And he's succeeded in that. I'm using the solid shot. So that's a heavy one weapon. And that's a strength 10 and i can plus one to this roll if necessary so we need a three plus one because he's a tank ace gives him a three so that causes a wound that is a modifier of ap minus four so there's no saving throw on that at all uh, so i then cause d6 wounds and that's a six he's only got three so that vindicator is destroyed it's out of wounds going to roll a d6 and see whether it explodes which fortunately for me it does not so that vindicator is removed to summarize the rest of the shooting so my crisis suit opened up at the uh, rhino and nothing was done there followed by the strike squad at the top who also fired their pulse uh, rifles in there and uh, failed to cause any damage my commander, because he didn't use his shots onto the space walls down here, I didn't declare where he was shooting, so I uh, fired him at the chaplain. And even though his fusion blaster didn't really cause any damage at all, then his cyclic iron raker did the business and took three wounds off that chaplain, so he's down to just one wound remaining. And that's pretty much it for shooting. The last play that we've got on shooting is these three guys just over the back here those stealth uh, battle suits are going to fire at the space wolves and they're going to use their uh, burst cannons so they need fours to hit and it's a heavy four weapon so that's not so bad seven hits on that and it's strength five so they need uh, threes in order to wound. I see what happened with that one that went around the corner a second, but we've got at least three wounds there. Oh, it's a lot, a lot of ones and twos, that sucks. So you've got three saves to make there. And uh, one wound cause, that's it. So the Riptide is gonna get killed anyway. So he's gonna assault um, and go for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna film the Overwatch on camera. So. He's going to charge in and have a go at the Terminators. So the Terminators are going to overwatch. They're going to need sixes to hit with their combi bolters. Rerolling ones because I'm within six inches of my captain. Yeah, I made no difference. No hits at all. So then we need to see if the Riptide is in or not. Please fail it. Uh, eight inches. Yeah, that's fine. He only moved four inches, remember, because he was injured. So he's definitely in. So the Riptide has, uh, he's pretty beaten up, he's only got one wound left, so he's got two attacks. And he has a weapon skill of five, so he needs fives. And he gets nothing at all, so no hits at all. It's time for the Cataphracty Terminators to hit back. I have six dice. I need threes, fours to hit because of the uh, Chain Fist. Wow, all but two have hit. Um, I am strength eight, toughness seven of the Riptide, so I win on threes. They have all wounded. This is AP minus four, John. So six up. So six up or your invun save. I'll take the invun save. So five. five up invun save. They all two have gone through. So John is going to use his stim injectors now so to see if he can save these two. So it's six ups. Save. One save. save. So that one is two wounds. Uh, he's dead. He's only got one wound left. The Riptide has gone. Okay, so after the loss of the Riptide, just to sum up the rest of the turn, the um, stealth suits uh, decided to charge into the wolf. 
Uh, the wolf failed to hit an overwatch and then we failed our charge roll. So nothing much happened there. He's also passed his morale check. So um, that is the end of that turn. So with five turns in this game, possibility of six, I'm fully aware of the tower objective right at the back of their board. And I'm starting to hopefully push home a little bit harder now. So the Rhino's moved up. The Contentious Dreadnought has moved up. We're looking at putting pressure down on that back edge of the Tau battlefield. They do have first blood for destroying 10-man uh, Ultramarines. Tactical squad, got that hurt. Um, so, let's press home. The one Grey Hunter who's still alive is going up into the stealth suits. Rune Priest has moved up. He's got a couple of choicey targets down here as well. Um, around this side, the Calafracti Terminators and the Captain have moved up four inches. So slow now. Uh, looking at coming across, maybe into the Ghost Kill. It's a nine-inch charge. It's a nine-inch charge. Chaplain, it, it, that hurt getting shot. So he's going to attempt to go into combat over here. If I can kill him, probably won't get into combat with him. We've got this thing up here that I need to then deal with because obviously I'm no longer sitting on that objective and I want the tower one on the back edge of the battlefield. In the psychic phase, the Rune Priest managed to manifest Smite down onto the Stealth Squad down here. Three mortal wounds done. So uh, one on one wound and uh, that's two dead. Yay! Uh, plasma pistol from the chaplain shot at the commander. Save your protocols. Drone died. Excellent. No damage done from the bolters on the Terminator and the captain. And the Rhino and the Grey Hunter opened up at their target. So Grey Hunter shot at the other stealth squad. The Rhino opened up at the crisis suit. No damage done. So Keras Assault Cannon, we're shooting at the guys at the back of the battlefield that are holding on to the objective. So hitting on twos, they have all hit. But because they're weak and squishy tower, I'm now wounding on twos as well. Uh, they have all wound John. So it's minus one to the AP, but because they're in cover, it's plus one. So they get their normal four up save. So go on then, John, foul me. Oh, you sod. <laughs> all but two. Two Tau guys holding on to that objective have died, but they are going to have to take a morale check. It's going to be a turn of assault now. So the Grey Hunter is going to go into the stealth suits. Uh, down here, the Chaplain is going to go into the Commander. Terminators. They're going to try and go into the Ghost Kill, who's right on the edge of the, uh, on the, edge of the battlefield here. Nine-inch charge. We've got to survive lots and lots of Overwatch. Once again, the Grey Hunter and Stealth Suit combat has just been a blank nothing happening down there. Chaplin made it in. Now, as I went into combat, John overwatched me and killed me. But I used the command point to uh, save my invun save and uh, passed it. Yay, this is live. So I'm hitting first. Now I'm hitting on twos. And then I'm going to be wounding on fours. So hitting on twos. They have all hit. And then I am wounding on fours. One wound, that's all. So the commander's normal save is a three up, but with the minus one from the Croxius, it is a four up save. It's two damage. He fails it. Two damage. I'm guessing. Oh, you save your protocol. Save okay, your protocol. Sorry. Wow, that's annoying. <laughs> commander's turn to hit now. Four attacks. Weapon skill three. Let's see those twos and ones. Uh, three of hits. Strength five against toughness four, so wound on threes. Oh, one wound. No AP modifier for the commander, so a three up arm save. It's all good. And then the Terminators have also made it into combat as well, so we're going to hit the ghost kill. The Terminators are within six inches of the chaplain, so I will get a reroll on any fails to hit. Now, because I'm chain fists, I'm hitting on fours with a reroll. Uh, I'm going to need that reroll. Only three hits, four misses, two more hits. So overall, two misses now. Strength eight versus toughness six. I'm wounding on threes. No reroll, but all but one has wounded. So out of the wounds caused, John has put two on the two remaining drones. So they've gone. So now he's got um, four six up saves to make because these are damage 
two and there's two wounds. This is for the so, stimulate injector. So no, there is four wounds done. How many wounds does that ghost kill have, John? So he started out with ten. There's four there, so he's got six remaining. Six wounds left, ouch. Ghost kill turned to hit me. He's got three attacks. Hitting me on. Hitting on fives. Fives. Ooh, one hit. Strength six against toughness four, so yeah, that'll definitely wound him. Uh, what's the AP modifier, John? There isn't one. There isn't one, so it's two up save. He's all good. In the morale phase, no more damage done to any of these Tau guys. The stealth suit down here survived and the Tau fire warrior squad at the back of the board, all okay. So as we get to the end of turn three, it's in the balance. I think is probably the best way to describe this. Um, not much I can do about this objective down here unless I can free up my Terminators from the Ghost Kill. I do have my Captain, maybe the Chaplain as well, maybe get them back across over this side, securing that for me. But we have got a Devil Fish foot and a squad full of Fire Warriors in there. Over the right hand side of the battlefield, really only got my Rune Priest holding off down here. D3 Mortal Wounds is Spike is nasty so hopefully that stealth suit squad member will die piranha can be disappearing off long stripe not too fussed about to be honest he says confidently and long stripe will now rip me a new one um gray hunter yeah that's just whatever uh rhino and the contempt of dreadnought interesting now because that rhino has got 10 man tactical squad in there's the tower objective with three men left john yeah, there's three guys left. Only three men left. So if I can get up there, hold on to that objective, that'll be good. Then control that objective. It's game for the auction marines. But we're running out of turns. We're entering into John's turn four. So more than likely, these tactical squad guys won't actually get out until turn five. It's close. So John's got first blood at the moment. We're kind of both scoring line breaker. Or if I'm not, I soon will be. So, slay the Wardlord down here. No more drones left. Wounds will be going on to him directly. Exactly the same with the ghost kill. My commander has exited combat from the chaplain. Uh, so he's used his uh, movement to get out of combat and he'll be shooting in with no penalty. The ghost kill has executed the same maneuver. He's only got six wounds left, but he's just on the top stat line, which means he can go a full 12 inches. So he's over there, he's moved towards the objective, but he's still got the opportunity to shoot into those Terminators. The strike team have come out of the Devilfish, and they're on the bottom deck, uh, looking through the windows uh, with their pulse rifles, ready to take on either the Terminators, the Chaplain, or Captain, depending on how circumstances pan out. My Piranha has flown around the... Uh, fuel dump and is also looking at the same targets and so's the last remaining uh, stealth suit so the plan here is i'm going to use the stealth suits shots first of all against the chaplain hope that kills him off if it doesn't i'm going to split the fire of the piranha and hopefully kill him off that way fire the fusion gun at the captain and then that leaves if it all works out well the commander and the ghost keel and the strike team to then finish off the terminators if that all works out now back to my own objective and making sure i'm holding on to that well long strike has got shot at the rhino the rhino's made it across unscathed up till now he has just literally driven straight past a crisis suit guy so he's going to get a few shots in as well and the strike team on the top of the building have um, formed a bit of a firing squad up there hopefully if we get some juicy contents out of there we can start shooting them and i've got another squad of crisis guys in reserve so they've come in there nine inches away from the uh, contempt of dreadnought and they're really just forming a bit of a scrum line to make sure he doesn't really get too close to uh, the objective they're not really tank hunters they're not really geared up for shooting at vehicles but i'm going to just keep shooting at them anyway and hopefully the eighth edition goodness that we've had will allow some damage to be done to that contemptor oh and then finally once again, we continue the dance and the stealth suit squad has moved away from the lone wolf and hopefully this turn is the turn where he dies. So thus far, the stealth suit has opened up at the chaplain 
and he's dead uh, so that was the first step that worked out quite well however then i shot the piranha at the captain and um, he did suffer a wound but uh, rich used a command point to uh, re-roll that and uh, he grew it back miraculously the strike team down here have also fired at him and have done absolutely no damage at all. So next up we've got the commander and he's going to shoot at the terminators down here. And he's equipped with two weapons. He's got fusion blaster and a cyclic ion raker. So we'll start out with the fusion blaster. So the commander has a ballistic skill of two up to hit with the fusion blaster. So let's do that. And well, I've just about scraped it, but that is a hit. So the Fusion Blaster is a strength eight weapon. These guys are toughness four, so it's double. So I'm gonna need twos again to cause wound, which I do. Um, that is a minus AP four modifier, but they have a four up invon save, which Rich will now oh. fail very kindly. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so there is one guy dead. Thanks to uh, some lovely sound effects there. So next up, we've got the Cyclic Ion Raker, and that is a heavy six weapon. So again, it is twos to hit. And what we got there, that doesn't look so bad. We've got one miss out of all that lot. So five hits off of that weapon. And that again is a strength eight weapon. So that's going to be double his toughness. So that's twos in order to wound. Okay, and of those, we've got one fail to wound, four wounds caused. That's a minus one modifier. So three ups. So threes. Dice on the floor. No, oh, it takes a wound. It takes a wound. And that weapon causes D3 wounds. So let's see. How bad it is oh it's just a one so just a single wound uh, for the terminators so far and next up to shoot we've got the ghost keel and he's also going to be firing at the two remaining terminators he's got uh, two fusion blasters and he has a ballistic skill of four plus so here's my two fusion blasters and we've got ourselves one hit the fusion blaster is a strength eight weapon uh, so it's double their toughness so i need a two plus which i get uh, so it's an AP minus four modifier, but the invon save is a four up. So let's see how that goes. That's no. a two, so failed the uh, four up save. And that causes D6 wounds. It makes no difference. This guy's going to die painfully and horribly. Has he only got one wound left? He's only got one wound oh, left. Oh, he's dead then. Okay. And then next we've got the Cyclic Ion Raker. And I will uh, fire that in the standard profile. So that's a heavy six weapon. Just as a reminder, he needs a four in order to hit. So we've got one, two, three, four hits out of that lot. So he's a strength seven weapon, so he's going to need threes in order to cause a wound. Um, all but one, four all wounds. But one, so four wounds caused, and that is an AP minus one weapon. So three ups. So three ups. Oh, take some wounds. Just one wound. So it's one wound that causes D3 damage. Oh, hello. Uh, just the one. Just a one. So one wound on there. So next up to shoot is a devil fish, and that is going to be shooting again at the Terminators. Now the devil fish has a four plus uh, ballistic skill. We're going to fire the burst cannon, which is a heavy four weapon. And I need fours. Ah, so they're all hit. The gunner is obviously having a good day today. That's a strength five weapon. So they're toughness four. So I'm going to need threes to cause a wound. Ah, okay, so the dice gods are a little cross. I'm going to chew out a whole bunch of command points. There we go. So we've got three wounds caused on that. There's no AP modifier to that weapon at all. So there's just three two up saves to make. Oh, he's failed it. Okay. So that's a one damage weapon, but that's just enough to take him off the board, which is a little bit of a result. That's quite good. Okay. So next up, uh, we've got shooting from long strike and he's going to be targeting that rhino. Now he has his legendary two plus ballistic skill. I'm going to fire the railgun in solid shot mode. So that's a heavy one weapon. So I need a two to hit. That's a five. 
Awesome, that's good. So it is a strength 10 weapon and the rhino is toughness 7, so I need a 3. Oh, come on. Even if I add 1 to that, then uh, that's not enough to cause a wound, but I'm going to chew out a command point. I think that's almost my last one. I have to do a, a tally on that, but I think that might be my last one. And I'm going to try again. And a 3 plus 1 is a 4. That's more than enough. Uh, that is an AP minus four modifier, so there's no save for that, and it will cause D6 damage. So that's three wounds taken off the Rhino. So that leaves the Rhino on seven wounds, but of course Longstrike also has the smart missile system available to him. So he's got two smart missile systems, and they are heavy four. So again, we're going to need twos in order to hit so they've all hit which is a great start now the smart missile system is a strength five weapon so i'm going to need fives in order to cause a wound but i can add plus one as he's a tank ace to the roll so i actually need fours to cause wounds and of those we've got two. one two three three, three wounds. wounds three wounds any AP modifier? Uh, that's a no modifier on that at all, so you've got three regular saves to make. All good. Right, next up to take on the Rhino is going to be the um, last of the Crisis Suit Squad in uh, that was starting out in the middle of the building there. I'm going to fire both plasma rifles at the Rhino. Now, these guys have got a uh, ballistic skill of 4+, plus, so I'm going to need 4s to hit. Uh, oh dear. Sucks. So one hit. And the plasma weapon is a strength six weapon. So I'm going to need fives to wound, which I at least get that. And the plasma rifle has a AP modifier of minus three. So Rich Ooh. needs a six in order to save that. I want to see that Geeks logo. Uh, no. no, so that's one more damage done. So that leaves the Rhino on six wounds. But he's also got a fusion blaster to fire as well. So again, that is a four plus to hit with the fusion blaster. And it fails. So to summarize the rest of the shooting, the stealth suits have finally finished off that uh, wolf, which is which is good. The uh, strike squad on the top of the building and the one in the other building there with the objective on there, they've both fired at the Rhino. They've taken off another, I think it was another two wounds, but anyway, it is now ultimately down to four wounds. The new arrivals on the battlefield, uh, the mixed bag of crisis units, those guys have all fired in at the Dreadnought as well, and that has got down to three wounds. So they were actually surprisingly effective at taking wounds off. Not good enough. Uh, to kill it but it is at least a little bit beaten up now which is which is positive from my point of view so i'm going to do something slightly crazy here and the new arrivals are going to charge the contemptor basically because uh well he can withdraw from combat but he won't be able to shoot at me so i'm thinking i might sort of nullify that threat just a little bit I don't know if this is a smart move or not, but I'm going to go with it. It's a nine inch charge because they came in there nine inches away, which is the minimum distance they're allowed. Uh, so before uh, anything else happens, of course, Rich gets the opportunity to overwatch. Uh, so he's got his carrier's assault cannon to fire, first of all. And that's a heavy six weapon. Of course, overwatch needs sixes. So there's two hits yes. there. Uh, it's strength seven weapon. So you're going to need threes to wound. Ah, uh, no wounds. So, having got away with Overwatch unscathed, I need a 9 in order to get into combat, which... Oh, it's just enough, they're in. So, in they go. There's three of them, and they have two attacks each. Their weapon skill is pretty poor. It's a 5 uh, weapon skill. So, uh, uh, we've got two hits out of all that lot. Their strength is 5, and the Contemptor's toughness is 7, so they're going to need 5s to cause a wound and they don't so that didn't pay off very well at all it's time for the ultramarine contempt of dreadnought to hit back so i get four attacks now because of my reduced stat line i'm now going to be hitting on threes i am strength 14 because of my power fist so i'm going to be wounding on twos so let's hit first threes all but one have hit wounding on twos all of these have wounded so these are minus 
three to the AP and cause three damage each. John now has to make six ups on three dice. The, oh, he's failed all of them. So all three of the crisis suits are dead. Basically, there's nine wombs there. The crisis suits only have two wombs each. So that's six. So yeah, they're just, they're just dead. They're just dead. Very dead. So that wraps up the end of the Tau turn. It's not been a bad turn all in. So that wolf is dead. The rhino there is pretty battered. The terminators down here are dead. Um, the um, captain is still going. But I'd like to think that objective was now fairly secure. There's a fire warrior squad on there. There's a ghost keel. There's a devil fish. There's a commander not too far away. A piranha not too far away. And even one stealth suit guy not too far away. So I'm pretty comfortable about that. Not so comfortable about what's gone on the opposite side of the board, however. Uh, so the contempt has wiped out that squad. And it looks like charging in was a bit of a mistake. Probably should have known better. Um, but there's still a lot of models there. So there's still a lot of opportunity to hold on to that objective over that side. But of course, I've got potentially a 10-man squad and a contempt to be dealing with as the uh, game reaches its conclusion. Tau think they have the Ultramarines by the throat and the Ultramarines are here to prove that that is not the case. The captain is leading the way. He is the other side of the wall from the Fire Warrior squad that are holding on to that objective. I'm going to shoot them and I'm going to go through the window and I'm going to go cut them up with a chain fist. That's going to hurt. The stealth squad member down here, the one remainer, the Rune Priest is looking at him over the back of the battlefield right in the deployment for the tower the contentious dreadnought has moved around only going six inches now only um shots in the care of assault cannon two choices really we have the guys on the objective or we have the other fire warrior squad at the top of the building tactical marines are out they move their three inches and then they're six so they're nicer within charge range now and shooting range of the guys holding on to the objective and the rhino has come up with them as well was tempted to take the rhino into combat with that crisis suit down there but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to kill him off. Uh, so more shots being uh, fired in from that rhino. I need to get onto this objective. I need to hold it and I need to kill anything that comes anywhere near me. In the psychic phase, the rune priest harnessed the warp, casting out smite on the stealth squad. I managed to roll one on my D3 mortal womb. So uh, yeah, only one womb done. He's got one womb left and I'm out of range of the... Uh, Plasma pistol, so woohoo! Um, the captain in the cataphract terminator armor, he's shot through the window, killing off one of the fire warrior squad inside the building. We will be going into combat. And finally, the rhino and the tactical marines aimed and shot into the fire warrior squad, holding onto the objective, killing off two. One guy's left. I will be going into combat. The Keras assault cannon from the contemptor shot up through the tree, through. The ruins of the building killing off two of the of the fire warrior squad on top of that building up there so we're thinning out the numbers in the tower deployment zone the ultramarines captain has made it into assault with the fire warrior squad no damage done from overwatch is surprising when you're being shot at by half of the tower army um right so this guy has four attacks now i'm hitting with a chain fist so it's minus one to hit i normally hit on two so it's threes threes to hit why is it whenever i have to do this i roll one hit uh. okay one hit still gonna squish some fire warriors um and then basically it is twos to wound or twos to kill oh my god <laughs> so after the colossal epic fail from the uh captain Fire warriors turn to hit back. They get one attack each. How many are alive, John? There's five left. Five. Okay, so and five attacks. And they need fives. Fives to hit me. Oh, oh look, there's two. That, there, there, there. There. Hits, yeah, John's what? using my dice, which I'm not overly happy about because any uh, any superstitious gamer out there knows that you only roll your own dice. You don't use other people's. John, on the other hand, is ignoring that and he's uh, he's destroying my dice for me, Here, which I, is I, really I, nice. Don't. I contaminated them. He has contaminated my dice. So. So their strength three, John's just rolled a six and a three to wound me. So I have taken uh, one wound. So I need to make one two up save, which I do. Time for the tactical squad right at the back of the battlefield to show the captain what it's all about. Uh, nine guys in combat. So one attack each, needing threes to 
hit and then uh, threes to wound. So threes to hit, uh, three misses, and then threes to wound. Pretty much, oh, okay, all but two have wounded. There's no AP modifier on this, John. So you have four armor saves to make. Uh, oh, I only died once. He's dead once. I'll take that. So he's dead. Good, good. The only thing really left to do is morale. The only morale check that we have to do now is the three fire warrior squads on top. Their leadership seven. They've lost two guys. John needs to roll under five. He rolls a six, which he doesn't. We'd have lost another mini. So at the end of turn four for the ultramarines, we've gone mixed bag. Shooting was okay. Quite a bit of damage. A little bit of damage done. Back of the battlefield, brilliant. Exactly what I want to happen. Kill off the remaining fire warrior. Hold on to that objective. Not so brilliant from the captain in the building with the other fire warrior squad who completely and utterly failed to kill off a poxy pathetic little fire warrior squad with a goddamn chain fist. So the last remaining stealth suit guy has um, turned uh, back to the uh, rune priest and is going to be shooting at him. Um, fed up of being smited in the back constantly, so that's uh, not going to happen anymore, hopefully. And then over towards the objective, uh, my commander's moved as far as he can, only eight inches up towards the... Um, captain that's inside the building just inside the windows just in there and the piranha is nicely lined up as well to shoot through those windows the um strike squad inside they've exited combat and have moved away in order that the ghost keel and the devil fish which has come down from the upper deck can fire at that captain we're hoping to take him out this turn and it's really all about killing that tactical squad now that's around that objective so my crisis suit has hopped up on the building the three strike squad members have uh, gone to the front of the building to get uh, best line of sight and long strike is going to stay where he is because um, he can just turn around and shoot um, i might try to sub munition rounds into that building and see what happens with that and behind the landing pad that long strike is occupying you'll see the three stealth suit guys have also moved uh, their maximum eight inches and have got eyes on to that building as well so it is all about shooting that squad really <laughs> So first up, we've got the Piranha. Um, that's going to fire the Fusion Blaster at the uh, Captain. He needs a 4, which he hits. That's a Strength 8 weapon, so it's just a 2 to wound. Oh, nice. So that's a wound as well. Now, it is a minus 4 modifier, but so that's going to invalidate any armor save. But of course, Rich does still have his invun save. So let's see how that goes. Yeah. Oh! No. So that causes D6 wounds. Six wounds. How many wounds has he got? Six. Oh, he's dead. Okay, so next up what we're going to do is the strike team. They're the three members of that strike team, and they're going to fire their pulse rifles into the tactical squad on the top of the building. They need fours to hit. And there we go. We've got four hits. Now that's a strength five weapon. And their toughness four, so they're going to need threes in order to cause a wound. And ah, out of that lot, one wound. So Rich has got one save to make, which he doesn't do. So next up, we've got the crisis suit, and we're going to fire the two uh, plasma rifles first of all. So again, we need fours to be hitting. Oh, that's terrible. So one hit. That's a strength six weapon. So again, it is a three to wound which is no wound, not particularly good. And then what we'll do next is we'll look at long strike. So long strike um, can uh, turn the turret around and fire into that squad. And I'm gonna use the submunition rounds, I think. So the submunition shot is a heavy D6 weapon and it got a three. Now I, I do actually have a couple of command points left, so I'm gonna hope for a better result, marginally better result. So that's four shots and let's take those now now long strike needs a two to hit not too shabby so three hits so the submunition rounds are only a strength six weapon so it's threes to wound and we've got three wounds there and that's a minus one on the ap modifier but i am in cover absolutely so 
I plus one. Yep, so it's back to square, so it's back to three up. So what was it? Three wounds? Three wounds, three up. Three wounds, three ups. It's all good. Saved. Okay, and then he's also got a smart missile system, and he's got two of those, and they are both heavy four weapons. Again, we need twos initially to hit. And all but, all one. but one of those are hits. That is a strength five weapon, so it's threes to cause a wound. Uh, not so good there. So we've got three wounds. The AP modifier is zero on that. All saved. The final thing for Jonathan is the three remaining stealth suits. Fours. Fours to hit me. Oh, there's a few misses there, John. Oh, okay, three. Oh, okay. So three to wound. Six wounds. No AP modifier. One dead space marine. This is it, potentially the last turn of the game. Movement has been done. The Rune Priest has moved up, looking at finally killing off the one remaining Stealth Squad member. He shot at the Rune Priest last turn, but no damage at all. Down the back of the battlefield, no morale check needed for the Space Marines. There's enough of them alive. Contest Dreadnoughts move back, the Rhinos move back. I am well within three inches of that objective with three units. So no matter what John does, that should be mine. Uh, down here now if this game does end John as I have pointed out to him has made a slight tactical error So my captain was alive and was here within three inches of this objective, but John fell back If this game ends now, he's got nobody within three inches of this objective So he won't score any victory points for this one So what I would have done personally is the captain was alive fire warriors are in combat I'd left the fire warriors in sacrificial lamb. They'd have died, but I'd have moved up all of this lot all of the tower that are around to within three inches of this objective so there'd have been one two an extra four units here to my one there's nothing i could have done if john had done that but at the moment there is nobody holding on to this objective so if we get a turn six john will be able to consolidate on it and it, it's yeah negated but but in john's defense in seventh edition these guys would have had their jackpot moves in the assault phase to move up but of course they don't get that anymore so let's do some shooting we've got the room priest down here and then we've got the tactical squad and the uh, Katerns Dreadnought to shoot down there. Crisis Suits has taken one wound. That has been done from the Curse Assault Cannon on the Katerns Dreadnought. Tactical squad shot and the Rhino shot at the um, Fire Warriors on top of the building, killing off two. So one guy left. Um, Rhino, thinking about going into assault with the Stealth Scoots down there. I went to take my Rhino into assault and only rolled a five. It needed an eight inches, so they didn't, well, it didn't make it into assault. So that is the end of turn five. So now we need to roll the dice to see if we get a turn six. Three up, we get a turn six. Anything less, the game ends. It's a two, the game ends. So that is it. That is the end of the game. That was bloody and that was brutal. A um, lot of damage both sides. A lot of the stuff left for the town, mainly in this bottom left-hand corner of the battlefield. But unfortunately, Jonathan has nothing within three inches of this objective. So John scores. Slow the Warlord, First Blood, and Linebreaker. However, the Ultramarines down here have consolidated their remaining forces onto this objective. Um, I score Linebreaker and I score three victory points for holding onto this objective. So it is a win for the Ultramarines, 4-3 on victory points. Hi guys, welcome to the post-game review. Um, it's a win for the Ultramarines. Just, only just, uh, apologise if we look a little bit sweaty. It's been 38 degrees in my conservatory. It's so hot in here. I don't even know how the models are still standing, to be honest. I'm surprised none of them have melted. Um, it's so hot. Um, so, yeah, win for the Ultramarines against the Tau. Uh, how did that go? So, from, an, from my point of view, from the Ultramarines' point of view, I th thought, and John will back me up, the first couple of turns... When I was getting the living hell shot out of me, especially by that riptide, I thought, oh, here we go. Tower exactly the same, overpowered, um, just vile scum that only people like John take. Um, but then I think it was about turn three 
it started to turn, uh, started to get into combat, the Riptide died. Um, making it into combat with that quite quickly and getting rid of that in two turns I think was a uh, positive for me. Uh, units of the game, Content to Dreadnought maybe. He did well. He, I think he might have put the final blow on the Riptide or of that, or the Terminators. Mm, um, and then he just went around the battlefield shooting the hell out of anything. Contemptors are tough. Um, one thing I am going to say is, one of the things I found about 8th edition is the tanks are quite tough now. They're resilient and they, they take a lot of damage to kill them off. So John's Imperial Guard army we've faced yeah. with Orcs, is it's a very hard nut to crack because there's a lot of tanks, a lot of wounds. Mm -hmm. Rhinos are tough. My Razorback today died in one round of shooting. There was a lot of dice thrown at it, to be fair. It was a Riptide shooting at it, admittedly. I will definitely say that. Um, and it was a lot of good rolling. And it was a lot of good saves. rolling. Um, <clears throat> moment of the game, my Warlord towards the end, failing miserably to hurt any of the Fire Warriors in combat was quite annoying. Um, and then failing his Invun save, his 3-up Invun save, and then dying on a D6... Straight off the bat like that, I mean, nothing. Ugh, that's frustrating. Um, overall, quite impressed with the Ultramarines. I played the game, so I forget the fact that I'm playing Tau. Um, hold on to that objective. And John, as I, I, think I said in the video, made one slight tactical error. Yeah, I threw the match, basically. By, uh, he made silly. He one tactical error, which was he pulled back from the captain with the Fire Warrior squad, which is totally fine and reasonable thing to do. Get that and get where you're going to do it. He's got a chain fist. He's going to punch you a new one. You pull back so you could open fire on him, which worked. You killed him. Mm -hmm. But then you can't move on to that objective. And that was at turn five. So if you'd have left the Fire Warrior squad in combat, um, consolidated everything else close to it, even take, them, even take them into combat with mm -hmm. the Fire Warrior squad, you'd have, you'd have killed the commander and you'd have had four units sitting on that objective. So, you know. But it's... <sighs> I think part of it as well is the fact that we're still in the mindset of 7th and I'm sure you guys out there might be finding it as well because it's only uh, been out now a little while that you still act your army like you did in 7th. So with you... Yeah, losing those as uh, assault phase move is, is quite challenging for, for Tau actually. I, I, I tend to use that one, I have historically used that one quite a lot. Mm. The ability to be able to shoot stuff and then get out of the way is great. Um, I can understand why it's been taken away because what's your reply to that? You know, and what can you do? Nothing, nothing. Uh, so I understand why it's gone, but it, sometimes it's very easy, especially late in the game, to be reliant on that and mm -hmm. do some cheeky little moves at the end to, to switch things around. And I fully expected thinking, oh, I can put my ghost kill in there or I can move my commander in there. And of course, there is no option to move. Um, the Riptide, incidentally, if you overcharge, it can still do that, but it's the one and only model in town that can still do that. So one thing to bear in mind when you're picking your armies out there guys um, I also found actually it doesn't really affect my army too much but I can see a lot of tower players getting cross about the way Markalites work now my armies have never really been Markalite heavy but there is quite a significant change to how those things work okay. um, which I can see affecting other armies a little bit more than it did mine um, I mean overall the, the strengths and weaknesses of Tau are exactly the same so they are very powerful at shooting they're very powerful at standoff range, but when you get them into assault, squishy. That's when they start to fall down a little bit. Um, yeah. And one of the key things I think um, with this edition is going to be the, the ability to, to um, overwatch uh, with other units, especially because you can overwatch more than once. Um, in a lot of cases, that's quite handy to be able to rely on your your, your brothers out there to be able to, to cover you in the event of an assault coming in. Uh, although you can only do the overwatch for other units once the, the unit itself is charged. If, if everybody dies, if they fail the charge roll, they can overwatch again. So that can be a pretty powerful combination in the right circumstances. It can be, and in mm. certain, certain circumstances like that one, Tau have got stronger. They are better, uh, but they're still very squishy in combat. They they still die quite nicely. He says, as my commander or my captain failed to kill any that fire was, warriors. That was sheer fluke. That was I would never have predicted that. Just terrible dice. But it happens, you know, it happens. Um, so overall, it was a win for the Ultramarines. It was 4-3 on victory points. It literally came down to uh, line breaker and hold on to that objective at the back of the board. If we'd have had a turn six, you'd have won. 
Yeah, because I could have just moved straight into You'd have gone into the objective, another yeah. three points, and it had been 6 4. Yeah, there's no way I'd been able to shift all your units off the objective no. on my half, but I'd have scored an extra three points on your side. So, yeah, just could have done with that extra turn, really, but that's the way it goes. And uh, hey, it's a learning curve, at least it wasn't in the tournament. Okay? <laughs> it's just in front of the whole internet. <laughs> but it's nice to finally beat your tower. I think it is the first time that I've beaten them. Is it really? I think it is the first time I've beaten it's the your first time tower. I've handed you a victory. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. Um, so I think now I've been think toying with the idea about what to do with my Primaris Marines from the, the new box set um, I think I'm going to do them blue I think I'm going to do them as Ultramarines um, I like taking my Ultramarines in 40k they're geared for 30k they really are they're Horus Heresy Army that I love and I, I adore playing that game but I'd like to use them more in 40k so I think uh, Primaris Marines I think are going to come in um, maybe that new is it the Storm um, Stormhawk Tempest the new flyer that's really cool. Uh, might have to get one of them. Get a couple of um, flyers for this army as well. Maybe get a land raider because it's not. It hasn't got one, even though they're like three hundred odd points now. <sighs> but yeah, so I think I'm going to run my ultramarines a bit more often in forty k. So I'm just switching around in Horus Heresy and forty k a bit more often. But that was great fun game. Um, the first two turns I was ranting and moaning quite a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of swearing off camera that I was like, oh, tell them. Blah, blah, blah. They haven't changed, but you get into combat, you kill them, and uh, if you outsmart your opponent, then you can... Or if your opponent's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> then, you can, then you can pull a victory from it. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. Please leave us a comment. It'd be great to hear your feedback, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.